I'm your host, Savannah. I will be your cook today and every day because it's my channel. We are going over apples. So apples, there's over a hundred popular varieties sold here in the United States and they have so many different variations. And so the way I break it down is two categories. So you can have apples that are really crispy and crunchy, or you can have apples that are really soft, traditionally called mealy, um, but I stay away from that because it has negative connotations, but it's not a bad thing. Mealy is actually, you know, it has a purpose. Um, the other category is taste. So an, an apple can be really sweet or it can be really sour. Like these two right here, for example, Granny Smith tends to be a really sour, sour apple. Um, Fuji, the other end of the spectrum, it's really sweet. The reason I think this is important to know is the purpose of like what you're using the apples for. So for example, Granny Smith is really, really popular for baking. And that is because it's a super crisp apple, it has a hard structure. So when it's baked, it like holds up really well. And then also the flavor comes into play. People really love this apple because the sourness is a really good balance to all the sugar that you're putting into the pie. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to use a sour apple in a pie. You can use a sweet apple. That's totally fine. If you want a fucking sweet ass pie, like do that. That's totally okay. Or if you just happen to have sweet apples and you don't have any sour ones, then you can add an element of sour to the pie that you're baking. You can use red wine, you can use uh, apple cider vinegar, you can use lemon juice. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities. We're using crispy today um, because we're gonna be doing a salad and we want that salad to be crunchy and have a lot of texture because it's the only real produce that's going in there. We're gonna put a little green onion, but that's just for a bit of flavor and garnish. So this is like, the staple of the dish and so you really want to have like good nice texture because there's nothing else going in there to create that and then we're gonna be cooking this guy and so when it's cooking we want it to retain its shape so we're using two crispy apples for soft apples obviously they're great for like snacking on you can just eat them by themselves but also they're super great for like if you're trying to make applesauce or like a uh, apple butter something like that but anyways Enough with that, let's let's move on. So we got our stuff set up. Some important things that I think are a really good habit to make. One, have just a bowl sitting on the counter for all the trash or compost that you're gonna have. So anything that I'm gonna be tossing from when I'm done cutting my produce, packaging, whatever, can just go in here. That way it's not just like all over your counter, causing clutter and just like making cooking stressful. We wanna make it as stress-free I'm just like as enjoyable as possible. And I think not having a mess really helps with that. We're going to start with the salad first. And a little disclaimer, uh, with a salad, we're going to be using egg yolk. Egg yolk is a pretty common ingredient in salad dressings. If you've ever had Caesar salad dressing, you've had egg yolk in your dressing. We're putting acid in this. So with the lemon juice, it, it generally kills the bacteria, but just know that like eating raw materials can make people sick. So just be aware of that. Don't crack your egg on the side of your bowl. You're going to run the risk of getting eggshells into your liquid. When you're cracking your egg, crack it on a surface because then you won't get eggshells in your bowl um, or at least you run the risk of doing that. And also when you crack it on a flat surface, it's like one good kind of whack. It creates like a little thin crack sort of all the way around the eggs. When you go to pull it apart, it's a little easier. Yeah. Lindsay, I'll place for your trash. Ta-da! Instead of like putting your egg yolk back and forth between two eggshell halves, I refrain from doing that. So what I do then, uh, because your fingers are like nice and round and smooth, I just go in and I scoop out like that. And so I'm just scooping out the egg yolk. I'm kind of running it back and forth between my fingers so the egg yolk detaches and voila. And then obviously I wash my hands because I'm a good person. 
So we can set our egg yolk or egg whites aside, um, but we don't have to throw them away. We can find plenty of recipes on the internet that involve egg whites. You can make meringue out of it. You can use it for a base for cake. There's tons of stuff you can do. So now we have our egg yolk. Then we're gonna need a quarter of a lemon. So I have a half right here. All right, cut that in half. Watching out for our little fingertip. We need those babies. And then I'm just going to cup my left hand, because I'm right-handed, over the bowl that has the egg yolk in it, and then I'm gonna squeeze, um, I'm gonna squeeze the lemon juice into my cup can, and that'll keep the seeds from getting into the dressing. So now we have our lemon juice and we have our egg. Now it's time to add salt. And I say add salt to taste because everybody's like preferable salt level is different. So I say if you're new to cooking, add just like a pinch. And then once we have the dressing mixed together, taste it and then add more if you want. I already know that I'm gonna want a lot of salt because I put salt on literally everything. So now we're just gonna give this a whisk. We're gonna make the lemon juice and the salt and the egg yolk a little wonderfully blended mixture. I'm also gonna add some pepper in. Again, do this to taste. Following like things like salt and pepper exactly to the tea of a recipe, unless you're baking, which that needs to be very specific, choose your own path on that just because everybody's really different and if you follow exactly to a recipe it can either not be enough or too much you run the risk of like not enjoying it and then when you hate something that you've made that just like puts you off cooking learn how to follow your salt heart next thing we have to do is we have to add the oil i use extra virgin olive just because it has more flavor and another tip your olive oil don't Keep it on the counter. It's on my counter right now because obviously I'm using it. But like I keep it up in a cupboard in a dark space away from any light. It preserves it a lot longer. Light breaks down the oil. We're not going to dump this right in. So what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called an emulsion. And that's when you take like an oil and you add it to something, you know, a water-based liquid uh, that it normally wouldn't mix with. And we do that by starting to whisk and then we very slowly drip in the oil. So it's just going to like, it's just going to be tiny few drops. It is something you have to be patient with, but that's like, that's a good thing. Like I think with our whole fast food culture, everybody like expects food to like just happen and happen now. but. You don't get better food by it being fast. And even though this is like a quick recipe, like it's still, there's certain things that take some time and that's totally worth it. And it can be enjoyable, you know, cause you're, you're giving yourself something really delicious in the end and you're giving yourself something worthwhile, uh, which I think is something we've sort of lost in food overall, like in general. Um, You know, my relationship with food is never as rewarding or fulfilling when I'm just eating junk food all the time or if I'm just eating fast food. And I totally, like, I've been in that place because, like, I've had no money and I didn't know how to cook. And so that was just, like, what was available. And that's completely understandable. But the whole point of this channel is to teach people, like, how to do really simple, easy, super cheap meals that will you know, keep people well fed, whatever their budget is, you know, if you rely on food stamps and it has to be like a super limited, you know, amount, you have to be really careful with what you buy, you know, this kind of stuff you'll be able to, to utilize. And now we have this beautiful, wonderful, creamy, the oil has not separated. So now we'll set that aside. And we're gonna put our apple in. And the reason I didn't 
cut the apple first is because it would have browned while we were making our dressing, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with a little like browning on an apple. It's just the apple flesh reacting to the air. But, you know, it looks a little nicer if you don't. So we're going to cut the apple in half. And we're going to cut that half in half. And we're going to cut that other half in half. Half in half. If you hold your food like this, you can chop your fingers off. We don't want that. So hold your food like this. And you can. Then we're just cutting out the core. And that's a really easy way. You just hold the top of the apple and you slice at an angle. And you just take this cut out right there. And that can go into our trash bowl. Okay. And then with these all flat, this, some people do it on this side. They say it's safer because the knife isn't going to slip on the skin. But when it's like this, it has a tendency to rock back and forth. And I think that's more dangerous. So just be really careful and do like long strokes. And then just a bunch together. So we get little pieces like this. When I initially was working on this recipe, I was shredding it with a cheese grater, but I found that that just released too much juice, more than I think was desirable. So this right here, like, that gave us a pretty good bowl of apple, and we haven't even used all the apple yet. So, okay. So now, we're gonna add our dressing. I'm just gonna give it a little like whisk again because some of the pepper sunk to the bottom. I think it needs more salt. That's much better. Also, when you're making this, like if it's too acidic, you could always add more oil. If it's not acidic enough, you can add more lemon juice. Just remember to be whisking while you're adding in those liquids. Then we just give our apple a toss. And then I like to add in some green onion. And I just use scissors to cut like garnishes. It's just a little easier. You can do it right over the bowl. You're not cutting and then scooping. And then I think that's good at onion for me. And so, you know, if you didn't have to sit here and listen to me talk the whole time, this would have taken you just like a few minutes to cook or not to cook, but to prepare. And so like now you have like a really nice, super healthy salad. So you've got egg yolk in there. So you've got protein. You've got a little bit of olive oil, which also you can use another oil if that's what you have. You know, if you have grape seed or avocado or, I probably wouldn't use coconut, that might be weird, especially because coconut solidifies. And then you have like fresh produce, so you're getting that apple in there. Apple skin has like a ton of vitamins in it, so that's like one of the reasons I leave the apple skin on. Mm. It's so good. It's a totally new way to like experience a food most people are pretty familiar with already. Like, I don't know anybody who's never eaten an apple. Mm. It's just like a medley of flavors. You have the sweet apple, you have the sour lemon, you have the umami from the olive oil, you got saltiness. It has everything in here. Mm. Instead of making you guys watch me eat this entire bowl, we're gonna move on to our next item. In my oven, I've preheated it to 375. That's the temp you're going to want for this. Our apple, be really careful when you're cutting this because it's going to be a little more difficult. But we're going to be cutting it into rounds. So we're going to get this. 
We're also going to want it to be a fairly thick because it's going to be in the oven. So you want it to hold up. Yeah. And then I'll take a smaller knife. And I'll use that to get out some of the pit. So I just like poke uh, the knife in like that and I twist until I get that center up. And as you can see, all my garbage is just going right into my trash bowl and my counters are super clear. I'm not gonna have to wipe them down a bunch. It's so helpful. I love to, you don't really want to eat the middle because it gets really hard even after cooking, but it's super cute. So I like to leave the stars in there. Okay. So now we're going to drizzle olive oil over all these babies. And we're going to get it on both sides. So we're going to salt and when you're salting you want to like make sure you're doing it from really like high above whatever it is you're salting because that's going to give you a really nice even coating over the entire apple. I have some tongs I'm going to use so I don't have to use washing my hands. We're also going to put a bunch of dried thyme. And this just gives it like a really nice herby, kind of sharp flavor. Love thyme. It's super wonderful. Okay. And then these guys will go into a sheet tray. So as you can see, I have the oven set to 375. When I open the oven, you'll see my rack right here, the top one where my finger is. That is on the middle part of the oven. Make sure you do that before you turn your oven on. Then we're going to put those guys in. Now we're going to set our timer for seven minutes. And then we'll be back. We got a little bit of browning on the edge. I'm just gonna break it in half. I just put the cheese on like that. All of them are coated with cheese. We're gonna put this back in for two more minutes and then check it and then see if it needs to go a little longer because we want the cheese to be like fully melted and if it can brown a little, that would be great. But this is Havarti, so that might not happen. Always make sure to put your oven mitt back on before grabbing your hot pan. Okay, so if you see the cheese isn't fully melted yet, it's still pretty thick, there's no coloration, we're going to put this back in and we're going to go for another two minutes. The cheese looks really well like melted you'll see it's just nice and nice and gooey right there when we soft if we take our knife and we poke apple itself is really soft easy to poke through so now that these are done we can plate them so the last touch is to put a little honey on top I know that sounds kind of strange with like the cheese and the thyme, but it's actually super delicious. It adds an element of sweetness that the apple doesn't carry. And so with the sour apple, you know, you got the herbaceous thyme on there, um, salty cheese, salt, olive oil, all those are like super umami, savory flavors. 
So this honey is going to like just give it something to kind of balance all that out. And it's going to work like really well together. So I'm going to take your fork and dive in. Mmm. Oh my god. That's amazing. It encompasses like every, every taste, flavor profile. It's just, it's so good. So well balanced. It's super easy. I mean, it only takes 10 minutes to cook, even if you have like more apples. Um, so it's like something you can easily make for yourself that is fulfilling and something that's different. So you're not eating this, the same kind of boring stuff all the time. You don't have to live off of cereal. And it's just so good. It's something you could like surprise people with at holidays, like super unique new side dish. I got honey. I do know like honey tends to be a little expensive. So if you didn't have honey, what you could do is when you put on the cheese, you can take sugar. If you have sugar in the raw, brown sugar, regular white table sugar, whatever, you can sprinkle that on top. It will do the same job as the honey. I just like the flavor of the honey. It's just easy to drizzle on. And that drizzle effect is like really nice. It makes you feel like, ooh, I'm eating at a fancy place. Treating yourself extra special. Treating yourself well with the food that you eat. It feels really good. Mmm. And the thing I wanted to recommend with the salad we made earlier, that dressing, a little bit of mustard is also really good in there. You can add like, just like a tablespoon's worth, probably not yellow table mustard, like French's. If you have something like this, like a Dijon or a honey mustard, that would also be really good. I just threw in like a teaspoon. That's all you need. Really good. That is all for the Apple episode. I will have my Instagram handle in the um, description below. And so if like any of you guys make this and you throw in your own twist, like I would love to be tagged on Instagram so that I can see that, that'd be really cool. I wanna see what you guys are making and I wanna know if, if you like it. And that's the way you can tell me. Also YouTube comments, duh.